Hello, I'm Eli Stacy. I'm a pre-sales engineer at Simply Live, and today I'd like to show you the slow-mo application layer running on a VBox mini server. The slow-mo application is designed to create multi-camera instant replays and highlight reels. Now this is just going to be a quick overview of this powerful application and its capabilities, but we're going to have a series of short videos going into detail for each of the topics covered. Let's get started. The VBOX has two hardware platforms, the Mini with 4 or 8 channels and the 4RU with 8 or 16 channels. I'm using the Mini 8 channel with a 6-in, 2-out configuration today, but the slow-mo application is identical on both platforms. In addition to this VBOX having 8 channels, it also supports super slow motion cameras, allowing for smoother video at lower playback speeds. First, let's get familiar with the user interface. At the top, we have our six inputs in the multi-viewer, and below, we have our two outputs, Program 1 and Program 2. At the top right is our Asset Management section, where we load pre-recorded content. This is also where we manage replay clips that we're going to be using throughout our production. Below that, we have our Playlist bin, where we create playlists and highlight reels, and finally, at the bottom right is our audio section, where we can control our external audio mixer if connected. Ease of operation is key in the slow-mo application design. One way this is done is with colors. As an example, everything in red relates to program, so when I tap on the red section of a live video, it sends that video to program. The same principles apply for green for program 2, blue for replay, and orange for selection. For operating on the slow-mo application, there are a few options. Hardware controllers are available to help with replay, such as the VBOX Remote and Shuttle Express. The Remote is designed for existing professional replay operators to quickly learn the VBOX through a familiar interface, allowing for maximum efficiency and speed in your production. We'll see more of this in a bit. The Shuttle Express, on the other hand, adds a jog shuttle with programmable hotkeys, giving tactile control in a primarily touchscreen workflow. While these peripherals are useful and work well in conjunction with the touchscreen, they are not required. Full replay control is maintained if operating on the touchscreen alone. Let's start by making a replay with just the touchscreen. Once an action happens, like you just tried to make that point, I can go back and simply jog across all my sources to find the beginning of that action. So it seems like it's right about here. Then what I do is I tap on the red to park that into program. And now, independently of program, you know, my multi-viewer is at a totally different time code. I'm playing back. Maybe I can get a different angle, maybe a little bit of a lead up. Uh, I'll put this one. I'll park it onto preview. Perfect. So now I'm waiting for the director's call to play it out. Once I get the call, I can either use the slider to play it out at a specific speed, or I can use one of the presets down here. Then once that's playing out, I want to play my second angle. I tap on my preview window. That starts playing out. I can then cue other angles up, tap on them, so it makes it very easy to chain replays. Then once I'm done, the director calls I'm off air. I do all live, and I'm ready for my next replay. Now, let's do another replay, this time using the Shuttle Express. Using the shuttle to jog back after any action, oh, we just tried to make that shot, I can jog back with this wheel to very easily and accurately control the point in time. From here, I can, you know, park an angle down here, I can view it independently of, uh, of my multi-viewer. What I can also do is I can create a clip of this. So I can mark an endpoint. Then I can play it out. I can watch this go through. Oh, he misses the shot. Oh, it's also a foul. Uh, so I'm going to mark an out point and then save it. This saves it as clip 114 that I can refer back to later. That's going to go into my clips bin. And it opens up the clip properties window where I can add a, a name. I can type this in. I also have the option to add keywords. So in this case, there, that was definitely a, flat, a foul. And uh, maybe it was offside, so maybe I want to mark that as well. Uh, then I'm going to hit apply, and now that metadata is stored with that clip that I can search later. So if I want to find all the 
the two points, all the, uh, all the fouls, I'd be able to search that and just get a result with those clips in it. If I go back to live, I can refer back to any of my clips at any point. So if I tap on the green section, it sends it to uh, preview. And from here, you know, it's, it's pretty straightforward. I can, I can see the, uh, I, I, can, I can view the clip. But what I can also do is I can do sync to preview. And so now my entire multi-viewer is synced at the time code of my preview window down here. And now I can select a different angle. So if I want to actually start with this one, that looks like it's a good chasing shot. Uh, then I want to eventually end up with this one. I can, I can decide, uh, you know, whenever the director calls it, I can play it out. Perfect. Oh, he doesn't make it. Let's get another angle of that. Oh, awful. You know, maybe I can tie some more here as well. And then the director says I'm off air. I press all live and I'm ready for my next replay. Finally, I'd like to show you the workflow using just the remote. On the remote, I can jog through my multi-viewer to find the beginning of an action. I can jog through, I say, okay. Looks like he's about to go for a layup. Perfect, so I'll mark an in. All right, it ended up being a three point, perfect. That's the end, I mark out, press enter to save it. I select which camera angle I wanna save. In this case, I thought camera four looked pretty good, so let's press D. It'll open up the clip properties. Uh, you know, at this point, you know what? It was a three point, so that's great. Uh, then I could press enter and save it. And so now that's saved that clip as one, two, three, D. So that means it's on page one, bank two, and it's the third clip, and D is referring to the fourth camera angle for that. Now, if I press all live, you know, going through my production, at any point, I can refer back to that clip. As long as I'm in the same page in bank, I see that three is lit up, which means I just created a clip there. I can tap on that and send it to program. Then from here, I can, I can review it. I can say, okay, perfect, that's good. I wanna start with this angle, but I want other angles for this replay. So I press sync to program. Now, usually this is on the touch screen, but I've also assigned it to my F7 key. So when I press this, it syncs my multi-viewer to my program row. So now I can control all the different camera angles for that same clip independently of my program window. I can assign another angle that I like. You know what, I thought uh, camera six uh, is, is pretty good, so I'm gonna press F onto preview and get that one ready. And so now I can say, okay, you know what? Maybe, maybe I wanna finish with, uh, with camera three. So I'll just, I'll just get that ready. So now what I would do is the director is gonna call uh, for a replay. I say replay ready. And whenever he calls it out, I play it at a percent speed. I can adjust it on the fly. Cool, he's gonna be making a shot. I'm getting ready on the second angle. Second angle's ready, I press take. It's gonna to go to the second angle. Then I can assign my, uh, camera, my third camera, which I thought as camera C would look pretty good, onto preview, then I press take, and then it plays it out. Perfect, I can slow it down, or it can ramp it back up to, to normal speed. And now whenever the director calls that I'm off air, I press all live and I'm ready for my next replay. Now that we have a few clips, we can start to put together a highlight package. To do this, we select clips by pressing select, select the clips that we want to add, and then press add to playlist, and it instantly adds it to our playlist package. We can also search for specific clips, so if I go up here and search for a foul, I find that clip that we did earlier, I can go here, select it, and then add to the playlist. Now what I do from here is if I tap on the green, it'll set it to preview. And then in here, I can jog through and it'll go through the clips and I can preview what my playlist is gonna look like. But on any of the clips, I can actually make some adjustments to it as well. So if I go on this one, I say, you know what? This angle isn't really good. Let, let's watch it play out. It's from the side. Yeah, it's a decent angle, but I might uh, want something else. So what I can do is once it's on preview, I do change angle, and then it'll jump my entire multi-viewer back to that point in time. I also see on my uh, remote that my preview window is flashing blue, that corresponds with the uh, multi-viewer. Then from here, I select what angle I want to change into. Instead of, uh, instead of this angle, 
instead of A, I'm going to be choosing D. So I just tap on this, or I could have pressed uh, the D button on here, and so now I see that it's 117D. Same in and out points, but instead it's just uh, a different camera angle. So now that, that one looks fine, I'm going to go through, let's look at the rest of it. It's going, oh, and he makes a, and he makes a shot. You know, that one seems a little bit short, so I'm going to go here, and what I'm going to do is also press extend, and so now it's, you know, it has an out point, but I can go past the out point. So I want to say, oh, perfect. I want it to kind of fade around here, so I'm going to set a new out point. Then, as I'm going down, I say, okay, these look good. I can set new in points, I can set new out points, I can change angles. Once I'm ready with my playlist, I tap on it to go to the top, send it to program, and wait for the director's call. Once it calls to play it live, I press play to play it out at 100%, or I can use any of my presets down here as well, so I can set it to 67%. I then get a countdown here, so I see that's three out of six clips. I can see that it's going uh, down the playlist over here. I can see how much time is left, so I say, okay, there's, uh, there's around 12 seconds, 11, 10, 10 seconds, and then the director is going to be able to make a call based off of that. Finally, at the end of the game, you can export all the clips and playlists you created using the export application. This will export directly onto the local machine, or you can send it to either USB drives or to a network storage. I hope this overview has been useful in giving you an understanding of the capabilities of the slow-mo application layer on a VBox Mini server. As mentioned, if you'd like to learn more about the system, we'll have a series of videos going into detail for each of the topics covered today. Thank you.